love in this room. It's so, one, so beautiful. I'm overwhelmed. You know, I was Cynthia's roommate. Cynthia spent two hours every single day in deep meditation. We lived in a very small apartment, a single, but there was a little area between the main room and the bathroom, I guess you could call it sort of a vanity area, and she asked me if I would put solid core doors on both sides of that area so that she could close off the world and she could meditate in that room, which she did every single day. And sometimes I would, I would have to uh, use the restroom. <laughs> and I would gently knock on the door just to let her know that I needed to pass through. And then I would open the door and she would be sitting in a, um, you know, a yoga posture, meditating very deeply, very profoundly, and I would step around her as gently as I could, close the other door and use the restroom, and then I would knock again. <laughs> Pass through, close that door behind me, and then open the other door and close the door again. so she could have her beautiful little space, so she could have her meditation which was so important to her. God, she was beautiful. Um, when she wasn't meditating, she was writing, 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 a notebook after notebook, filling up notebook after notebook with prayers, essentially just prayers. And or copying quotes from Kabir or Rumi or Lao Tzu or Jesus. She was very eclectic that way. It was so beautiful. Uh, this is just a page, a random page from her, uh, many of her journals. And she said, I surrender completely to all that is. I release all burdens and go for that surrender with totality of my being. I feel the magnificence of God's presence every moment of my life. This was like an affirmation she was writing to herself. I am divinely guided in every endeavor. I feel the peace and joy of the tremendous safety I feel inside the one love I feel connected and full of love and light 
and I feel joy bubbling forth from my being at all times. Generosity and love flow from me to all I come in contact with. All who come in my presence feel this love, and they realize who they truly are. We are all in the presence of the Spirit together. Well, you know, these tears are just because this is who she was, and I miss her so much. But um, she was such a unique being. You know, the the first couple of weeks after I invited her to come live with me, she was between places. She was staying with a friend, and she was going to have to leave that apartment. And she didn't have a place to go, and I said, you, you just come and stay with me until you, you know, get back on your feet. Well, 20 years later, we're still, <laughs> we're still living together. <laughs> I didn't mind one bit. God, I'm not living with her. Um, but that second week that she was with me, she said, you know, if you bring a hot dog into this house, I'm going to have to move out. <laughs> and I, I said, uh, Okay, I think that's easy enough to do. I won't bring it back into the house. She said, you know, if you eat a hot dog when you're not in this house, I'm not going to kiss you anymore. And I said, oh, so essentially, you're just asking me to give up hot dogs altogether. And she said, if you want my kisses, Yes, I do want your kisses. Okay. I can give up hot dogs altogether. I said, I said, what about tofu dogs? Do you have any objections? <laughs> she said, you know, you're just playing with disaster. She said, you're toying with the idea of hot dogs. <laughs> and she said, it would do you well just to give up the idea of hot dogs altogether. <laughs> she said, just put them out of your mind. And I said to her, you know, that's like when they say, don't think of a white elephant. I mean, that's all you can think about. But, uh, I said, okay, Cindy, uh, I can give up hot dogs. I can give them up all together. Well, I cheated on her a couple of times. <laughs> and I, I had a hot dog, but she had warned me. She said, you know, if you eat a hot dog on the outside world, I will know it. <laughs> you can't lie to me. I, she was psychic. And I knew she was not, she was not joking. So uh, the two times that I cheated on her, I said, sweetheart, you know, you, you probably already know this, but I stopped at their reader's mental. And then, uh, and uh, so I just want to confess it. It was like uh, confessing that I, had a, another lover <laughs> and uh, she said I forgive you <laughs> and that only happened a couple of times <laughs> but uh, uh, I treasured her presence in my life so so deeply she you know I was talking to a friend of hers another Johnny not this Johnny another Johnny and I was saying I'm so afraid uh, when I get up there, I'm going to, you know, forget the most important things that I want to say about her. And uh, and he said, well, start off with that, you know, just say you're afraid that you're going to forget. And he said, you know, God will come through you. And, uh, and I realized that's true. 
Cynthia's only concern for me was that I become the best version of myself that I could be. And she said that a number of times. I'm so grateful to her for that. This was her general concern for everybody. She wanted to help everybody become the best version of themselves. And uh, even after the assault and all the things she went through, she still had a beautiful, gracious heart. Such a, such a sweet, powerful, generous, courageous, beautiful spirit. I really want to thank Johnny for this memorial. He really put it together pretty much all by himself. I just did what he told me to do because I've been kind of a little bit of a wreck. And uh, all, all that you see here is really his creation. Yeah, thank you so much, Johnny. Thank you. feels like the most important evening of my whole life because the love is so palpable and so sweet. Um, to all of you, you know, thank you for being a part of her life and giving her uh, the joy of this planet. Um, Yeah. <laughs> 